Zoe, let me ask you a question. You know, <laughs> interestingly, when I think about this, you know, everyone's got to pitch in. Everyone has their own sphere of influence. Everyone has their own ability to flip other people, so to speak. How do people my age and older participate? How do we help getting this message further down the road for young people? Absolutely. So I think that one thing is clearly um, if, if you're able to go out to the actions that are happening in the streets, I think that's one side of things that's incredibly important. But I think that even if you can't do that, there are still ways to influence those around you um, by even having conversations like this with the people around you and really just making sure people are educated, um, as Janelle was saying previously, on what the issues really are. Um, on history of issues in the United States and on how these systems still work to oppress people every day. So I think having these really important conversations is a huge way, a huge way to help with the cause. Tatiana, I pick up on that too. Of course, you know, when you have allies in this world, things go a bit easier, a bit. It's still difficult, but you know what I'm saying? If there are allies that are a little bit older, does that help the cause as well? Yes, absolutely. Having yeah. allies definitely helps the cause. And then um, just working with those allies is just um, kind of like me in the middle and stuff. Like not everyone can go to a protest, but um, signing petitions, doing your research and gaining knowledge. Like no matter how old you are, knowledge is definitely power. And then being able to spread that knowledge onto um, other people, even, you know, not every youth um person has that power or, or that knowledge and stuff. So just being able to spread the word definitely um, helps a lot. And then just supporting the youth, like just, if you can, if you can support us any way you can, like that, that goes a long way. So. That's true. You know, Janelle, when you think about it, older people tend to have more access. They've been at this a little bit longer access to the system, so to speak. And that to me seems like there, there is the, that's the possibility. If you've got someone who's willing to kind of warm in there and fight the fight, uh, you know, the influence could be profound. So how do you identify older people who are willing to, you know, link arms with y'all? Do you have folks who, who, who come volunteer? Do you recruit older people? How does that work? Yeah, actually, we do have a lot of older people who come to us and just ask, what can we do? What, nice. what do you need? And I think that's very helpful for us because uh, a lot of times, like as young people, we need those bodies to be at the forefront, right? We need people to are, that we know who are going to protect us if things go wrong or if something nice. happens. Um, yep. But also it's just that connection, right? So if there's an older person who says, look, I know this person at the state level or the city level who can help you do this or do that, then that's super, super helpful for us because at, the, at our age, sometimes we don't have those connections. So whatever resources that you all feel that you can give us, we completely appreciate that. Um, one thing I also wanted to add as well is that there are many organizations right now doing anti-racism trainings for free. Um, and that's usually not a free um, thing that you get. So if you are somebody who just wants to know more information or wants to get involved, there's that option as well. So um, on social media, there's event pages that you can look up or reach out to one of us and we can get you involved with anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about it, Zoe, there are so many Facebook posts out there with uh, black literature, black and brown literature, I should say, all kinds of different things that are being proposed out there, titles that folks could passively teach themselves how to, to get up to speed, so to speak. You don't necessarily have to be sitting in a room now having a lecturer, you know, to kind of telling you how to think. It's all out there right now, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think we're living in a time where that much information and that much open access to this information has never really been available to us like it is now. Um, and I think it's important, you know, especially for allies and white allies um, to really take um, the initiative to educate themselves, um, especially on the questions that are often posed to members of our minority communities that could be easily answered through a Google search, through educating ourselves, because it's really not these communities' responsibility to, to educate our allies as well. You know, interesting, Tatiana, um, I forget that celebrity, I wanna say Chris Rock, but I don't think that's right. Anyway, somebody, it was a black artist that said, look, I don't talk about race with white people anymore. I just, <laughs> I just don't do it. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's all out there. Y'all can, you know, educate yourselves easily if you want to. But you got to lead a horse to water sometimes and, you know, and, and, and just get them there. Are you finding this that folks my age and older are open at this point now? Or are you still finding a lot of resistance when you bring them to the water's edge like this? 
Um, it's kind of a hit or miss, honestly, but I feel like um, they are, I feel like they're more, mostly open um, just because it is a new age and things are a little bit different. Like we, we do have more body cam footage and mostly everything's being filmed nowadays. So it is a little bit different, right. um, but it's the same with like the younger generation too. I, I do find a lot of the times they do kind of go and find like a, a token black friend to kind of feed them information, but there's so many resources on the internet nowadays or I do um, go and like, try to help them find like movies and stuff. Cause not everyone wants to read like a really long article and everything, but there's so many good movies, even mm -hmm. just on Netflix. If, if you want to watch like two or three a week, it, it, it can get you so woke so fast. And then it'll make you more inclined to go on the internet and, mm -hmm. you know, do a little bit more research and stuff. But it just, it's just, you have to be able to want to go and, you know, find the information on yourself, on, on your own, you know, not, it's not a black person's job to, to give you all, all the resources, you know what I mean? So. That's right, I do know what you mean. It, it's, it's, it, it can be very frustrating. Yeah. You know, and for J Janelle, let me ask, I'll finish uh, with a, this question as well. You know, like any other city, Albuquerque and New Mexico statewide, I should say, one of the toughest areas is for black women to get a toehold in a lot of uh, areas in this, in this world. I see an opportunity in this situation though, to get that idea sort of elevated a bit more. And again, we're 2.9 of the population here. So this is a tough, tough throw. But for black women, go ahead and, and speak to that a little bit. And I'll, maybe I'll toss back to Tatiana for a little bit more on that. But go ahead, Janelle, what, what's the story there as you see it? Well, I think we all need to remember that Black Lives Matter movement started by amazing black women, right? So we don't want to dismiss any work that we, you know, um, no matter how we feel in Albuquerque, because New Mexico is historically anti-black. Let's just put that out there. So realizing that we do have that opportunity right now to change that and to make sure that we have black women at the forefront of these movements and directly asking them, what do you need for this movement? We don't want to co-opt anything that's happening, any organizing, any events. So making sure that if you are getting involved with Black Lives Matter movement or any movement at all, that you're directly talking, speaking to those people who are directly affected. So I think that's my biggest, my biggest takeaway from all of this and... Yeah, I'll pass it to Tatiana to answer that if she wants to. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just end it in the words of Malcolm X. Um, he said, um, the Black woman is the most disrespected woman in America. And I totally agree with that statement. Um, I would say the things that happen to um, Black men um, getting shot by the police happen to Black women in um, the medical system, um, even like getting giving birth or, you know, um, I basically like, they don't take our pain seriously in like the medical fields and everything. And so even just going to the hospital for a checkup can be very, very, very complicated and everything. So um, we just have to stand by our black women um, and our black men and our black community. Um, and I know um, people of our all races and stuff, all of our people of color, we're all standing together right now and our white allies are standing with us and we just need to stay strong as a community overall, so. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Tatiana, Zoe, and Janelle, thank you for a little bit more on this conversation. We can go all night or day with this easily. And there was more conversation to be had, so I want to open and invite you all back to do this one more time, down, or maybe a couple more times down the road. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.